before we get to Good the morning, flooding Pete. assistance that was announced yesterday, you've just got off a call with your Five Eyes partners. What was decided? What was discussed? Well, it was an important opportunity, Pete, to get together with my American, uh, British, uh, Canadian and New Zealand uh, counterparts to discuss a united response to Putin and Russia's aggression in Ukraine. Obviously, we're turning the screws on the Russian economy. We've seen the ruble in freefall. We've seen the stock market in Russia closed. Uh, the central bank in Russia has not been able to access uh, its $600 billion of foreign reserves. And together, we've put sanctions on hundreds of individuals as well as entities and other restrictions are now in place. And it's been a full court press. So today we discussed the further actions that we could uh, potentially take, right. but also what we need to do more. Well, we're, we're looking at all manner of options, but we're focusing on oligarchs uh, as well and tracing their assets uh, around the world. Uh, but we're also focusing on the long-term consequences and impacts of what has transpired in the Ukraine, particularly the importance of having supply chain resilience and working together in those critical industries where we can't uh, leave our supply chains to chance or to the geopolitical risk which is now heightened around the world. OK, speaking of long term, and this is going to be an announcement by the Defence Minister and the Prime Minister uh, later on this morning, but we're going to have a troop surge for our forces over the next 20 years. That is part of a long term strategy. But in the short term, where the threat now is, we just talked about that, are we exposed and weak on national security? Exactly the opposite. Uh, it was this coalition government uh, that has dramatically increased spending on our defence force. When we came to government, uh, Pete, defence spending had fallen to its lowest level since 1938. That's a telling year. That was the year of appeasement. 1938, 1.56% of GDP was the equivalent defence spending under the Labor Party. We've now taken it above 2%. Mm. Uh, we've invested very significantly in new weapon systems, in new uh, defence capability, whether they be naval or air force or army. Uh, we've also entered into these important international partnerships like AUKUS and the Quad, which are going to be important in enhancing our national security. In today's announcement, where more than 18,000 additional members of the Australian Defence Force workforce will be taken on, uh, we'll take the Defence Force workforce above 100,000 and that is going to come at a cost of nearly 40 billion dollars and it's part of our long-term uh, strategy to secure Australia. Extra federal flood relief is coming but several neighbouring LGAs in affected regions have missed out treasure. We were just speaking to a business owner who is in one of those affected regions that has missed out. How is that fair on them? Where did you draw the line? Well, the, uh, the, the line was drawn in terms of these newest new payments based yeah. on the catastrophic events that we saw, for example, in Lismore. Uh, and so we've been working with the, the expert agencies on those matters, but we've made um, support available right across uh, Queensland and New South Wales to the flood affected areas. More than 300,000 uh, claims have been processed, uh, costing more than $400 million from the federal government. We've announced a package of support uh, with, uh, with state governments, which is seeing uh, money flow to small businesses, to primary producers. The Prime Minister yesterday made announcements around mental health, childcare support, uh, a whole manner of legal assistance, a whole manner of different initiatives which are designed to alleviate um, the pain and suffering that, of course, these communities are going through right now. We will stand by the communities of Queensland and New South Wales that have been affected by a flood, and we will help rebuild those communities that have been most affected, mm. particularly, for example, in Lismore. OK, uh, just a final one here, Treasurer. You, you made a speech last night in which you said there will be costs borne by Australians in defending our values. We are, as you know, already seeing those at the petrol pumps at the moment and at supermarkets mm. too. How long do you expect these higher prices to last? 
Well, I see petrol prices uh, remaining elevated for some time as a result of these geopolitical tensions. Um, and as you know, uh, the bar barrel of oil up to around $130 will have a major impact on the price of petrol at the Bowser. And we're already seeing prices above $2 a litre. Uh, we obviously in Australia will stand by our friends and allies and partners in in putting the pressure on, on, on the Putin regime. Uh, but what this heightened geopolitical risk is doing is lifting the price of commodities. Everything from coal, thermal coal, for example, has nearly doubled uh, in, the, uh, in just the two weeks of this, uh, of this uh, yeah. invasion. Uh, we've, we've seen European gas prices nearly triple and we've seen oil prices go up by around a third. So there has been a dramatic impact on the price of commodities that flows through to consumers but that is a reflection of the challenges that we face the very uncertain the very dangerous times that australia is now in treasurer josh frydenberg thank you for your time we'll talk to you soon